In the previous video we have introduced ourselves what does it mean to say a team. And in this video I would like to talk about various types of teams. As you will see, we have basically the four types of teams when it comes to some organizations. So we are going to have problem solving teams, self-managed teams, cross-functional teams which are really interesting, and then virtual teams. So let's begin with the problem solving teams. Well, as you see from the picture, uh, uh, people or the employees need to solve some specific problem, which is this question mark. So these problem solving teams, the team members usually meet for few hours each week. So these five guys, which are over here, have their regular jobs within the organization. But for instance, for uh, three hours per week, they are assigned to this problem solving team. So they meet up and they discuss ways of improving quality or efficiency. And I think it's quite intuitive when there are some more complex problems, it is better to organize your employees this way. And of course, these members share some ideas, suggest work processes for improvement. Uh, but what is, what is very important is that these teams usually have no authority for implementations of solution. So they just basically discuss these ways, they share the ideas and they suggest, so they maybe write some uh, report. And then there are other people outside this problem solving team who will be implementing the solution. Let's get to the second type, self-managed work teams. So these usually, at least in my mind, I remember it by construction companies. So construction, as quite often the construction companies operate uh, with, with the way of self-managed work teams. So these take responsibilities of their former supervisors. As you can see from the picture, there are, there are five team members, but usually there is no real supervisor. So they take the responsibilities themselves. And the, the main point is that they not only solve the problems, but they also implement the solutions. So they basically the construction company comes to build some house, they, they solve the problem. So they find out the way how to, let's say, repair the house. And then the exactly same group of people, exactly same team also is going to implement this solution. So they go through everything from planning to scheduling the work and finally taking action. However, these have some disadvantages. So here we have some uh, disadvantages, disadvantages. And basically those are bad conflict management. When you have no real supervisor, well, the conflicts will occur and there is no one really to resolve these. And also there is a higher absenteeism than under, under different types of teams. Now let's go to the more interesting one, which is the cross-functional teams. So employees from several departments come together and create a team. So you can see it over here, we have one, two, three, four, five departments. So for instance, this can be production department, this can be purchasing, this can be marketing, sales, research and development, and they simply come together and form one team. Quite often this is uh, thinly connected with product teams. So quite often there are product teams. So when there is a new product, to be designed, you would like to have opinions from all of your departments when it comes to this new product. And these are the employees from same hierarchical level, but different work areas. They come together, they exchange information and they develop some new ideas. And these kind of teams are usually used to solve very complex problems, such as a new product development. Now, finally, we come to the virtual teams. These are, as you can see, and I would like to add to the picture that there is usually that there is usually some technology. So some technology, which you can really imagine is in the middle. So the technology would be somewhere here. And you can see it here, these are using the technology to unite physically dispersed members. And for, for these technologies, you can use some wide area networks, video conferencing or email. And you can really imagine it that these teams or the members of the teams 
are really dispersed throughout the continent and thanks to video conferencing they can operate as a team. However, there is also a disadvantage which you can see right over here. These suffer because of less social report and less direct interaction among members. So quite often it happens that these members of the team, they never really meet physically and, and they cannot develop the social interaction and the social relationship. So also the team will not be operating that effectively. So those were the four types of teams when it comes to the organizations.